Okay guys, this is another distraction uh, from my usual stuff. Um, over to Christmas, a friend of mine asked me if I could have a look at her uh, stereo system here. Uh, I guess as many of you guys know, when you see these um, combination things, um, you tend to run a mile. Um, however, she told me her late husband installed this back in, I think, 95-96, so it had been giving faithful service for, I guess, the best part of 17 years, so... Um, I guess that's certainly as much as you could ask for something like this. So before it headed on its way to the landfill, um, I said I'd have a quick look. Um, the fault is a rather unfortunate one, uh, which is that suddenly the volume goes to 100%, and the uh, volume control here has no impact on the volume, um, which is somewhat unfortunate by way of a fault. Um, so, uh, the first thing I did was I opened it up and I did the usual disconnect all the internal cables and reconnect them all. Um, and the thing ran like a treat for two days, on and off. Uh, I called a lady up to tell her that it seemed to be okay now and I'd bring it back in about... <laughs> so it's long. Ten minutes after I made that call, the volume of this thing jumped to 100% and scared the life out of me. Because... I had it connected up to my JBL monitors, and uh, yeah, it was pretty loud. Um, so, um, then I thought, okay, let's go see if we can find some documentation on this thing. Um, and to my surprise, I found a complete service manual for this. So, this was not made in China or Japan, this was made in Malaysia. So, I guess we're talking early 90s here. Um, and I'll give you a quick walk around. So I took the lid off. Um, it has a three changer cassette. It has twin uh, cassette, sorry, three changer CD, twin cassettes, radio, and an auxiliary input at the back. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, the construction inside is obviously pre the what I would call the surface mount and everything going to China era. Um, because not only is it not surface mount, but it's got about four main circuit boards in it, and they're not even dual sided. These are all single sided boards um, with links on the other side instead of uh, tracks. So there's no surface mount, everything are conventional uh, devices, um, but of course. Um, the entire thing is digital, end-to-end. -end. Um, so when you turn the knob, you just feed pulses into this front control panel, which ultimately finds its way into here. And this is essentially the main board, which has all of the main functions on it. You have a separate one for driving the uh, CD dri uh, cassette drives. Um, and then look around from this end. Get some light in here. So essentially mains transformer. Power supply is on the board right behind it, as is the power amp. And then the power transistors fit on the back panel here. Um, with a uh, chunky heatsink, which is covered um, when it's all put together. Then you have this sort of main control board in the front here, um, which is what the volume control is connected to. Uh, various circuit boards for driving the uh, cassettes and uh, there's one here for the uh, CD changer um, I'm just trying to think if I told a lie if maybe there are some SMDs on this board right here but certainly on the main board and on the power amp board there are single sided boards with no uh, SMDs on them um, okay, so, um, since it's a, uh, an intermittent fault, um, and by that I mean very intermittent, um, I can only think, uh, I had a quick look at the documentation, um, we're very lucky in that, uh, I don't know if you can see this or not, but I got the full document, the full manual, uh, on the net, 
uh, it has everything in terms of how to take it apart. Um, take this lighter, did not we? How to take it apart, how to set it up, voltages, parts, supply, which, I don't know, I normally don't touch this modern gear, but that level of documentation I don't normally expect to find. Um, so, uh, of course I had to print them off because you can't use them. I don't know about you guys, but my eyesight is way past where I'd be able to use it at that scale. So, uh, I've uh, printed them all off. Um, and of course, as usual, they're usually spread across a couple of pages, so you end up spending a bit of time cutting and gluing. Um, but yeah, I certainly have all the documentation I need. Um, so, but before we get into all that deep theory stuff, uh, I have uh, dusted off the uh, low voltage, uh, low wattage, sorry, soldering iron, which I haven't used for a while. And so I'm just going to do a little bit of re-soldering, um, particularly around this chip here, because this chip does all the volume control functions. Um, and basically we'll see if we can provoke this thing into, uh, into making the fault go um, a little bit more permanent, or if it's contact related, then maybe just doing a little bit of resoldering around um, <clears throat> will make the problem go away. Um, the only slight anomaly that I've seen here, because um, as usual, I give it a quick good look around to see if there's anything immediately obvious, and the only thing I've seen is where this main board mounts at the bottom here, there is a screw hole and a threaded part obviously behind it um, and judging by the markings on this board there was a screw in here at some point and it's not there now but it is not in the case anywhere because obviously if there was a loose screw flying around in here and it somehow got its way uh, where it shouldn't be that could be causing all sorts of problems um, but I haven't been able to find it <laughs> so uh, um, if it was there, it's gone now, or at least I have not been able to track it down, and nothing rattles if we shake the thing around. Um, so, a little bit of soldering, and maybe a little bit of heat gun and whatever, and uh, see if we can provoke this thing to either get become a hard fault or to just go away completely, and then we go from there. I love the way you dream I love the way you dream I love the way you dream Okay guys, a bit of a wrap up on this JBC um, stereo thingy uh, that I've been trying to fix. Uh, I think it's fixed. Um, this is a block diagram of the whole setup. And so since the problem is that the, um, the volume suddenly jumps to 100%, um, I um, basically figured it has to be before you get to the power amp uh, because I can't imagine that if the signal didn't suddenly arrive at a high level then it wouldn't get out at a high level so I'm figuring it's further back um, so I concentrated on these two ICs here and the interconnect and so all I did is I resoldered all the pins and all these and also um, on the connector uh, since that might be a problem and uh, fortunately there's tons of information in the service manual so that's the volume control IC so soldered all the pins around that that's the base control one soldered all the pins for that and then these are the interconnects out to the power amplifier so I uh, as I say I reflowed all those and uh, on the actual circuit diagram there is the, um, the volume control guy. See if I can find the base guy. Here's the base I see right here. Um, and here we have the two main connectors that go at right angles off to the uh, power amp. So I resoldered all those, <coughs> put it all back together. Um, and well, essentially it has been powered up 24 times full 24 hours a day for the last four days. And every time I check it, it seems to go fine. So I think at this point we'll send it back to the lady and see how it goes.